Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be having another look at Jed Match. I'm going to look at the one to one and one to many tools. So before I get started if you haven't already please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because it will update you all of my future videos and okay that's it let's get into it. So first the one to many tool. So you'll notice that there's both a beta version and also just a DNA comparison. Um, they're both the same tool, just so that you know. The DNA comparison is kind of the more original one. The beta version gives you more flexibility. It allows you to change parameters and things like that. So I recommend using the beta one, but all in all, they're the same. So um, let's just look at the beta version because I think it's better. So the first benefit to this one-to-many testing here is that you can compare your results with people who've tested with completely different DNA companies. So say that you've tested with Ancestry DNA and you upload this um, your DNA to GEDmatch, you can use the one-to-many tool to compare with people who may have tested with 23andMe or whatever other kind of company. So you're getting a wider range of um, matches. Um, the next thing is that you'll be getting uh, the closest 2,000 matches to your kit. So when you do the one-to-many, you'll get a whole list of results and it'll be the 2,000 closest to you. So it naturally looks for segments that are seven centimorgans or larger, but you can tweak those parameters there. So that's the best thing about the beta. You can change how close or far away you want that match to be. And the best thing about that is you can say, you know, I want it to be a very particularly close match to me. So I'm going to really narrow those parameters or, you know, I just want anyone who's remotely close. So then you can widen it. So it will show you the amount of DNA that you share with your matches and it will also tell you the largest segment that you share with a match. So it will also give you the email address for all of your matches. So one of the benefits here is you can contact your matches and try to figure out how you're connected. Um, and I know that you can message people on other platforms, but one of the benefits to this one is having their email address means that if they don't log in to like if you're using something like MyHeritage for example and you message people via MyHeritage if they're not somebody who logs in regularly you just might you know not get a response and there are plenty of people who have not responded to my messages on different platforms but if you have their email address you can contact them directly and you know it just gives you a better shot of getting through to them so that's the one to many tool it's comparing your one kit to all of the data that's available in GEDCOM's database. <laughs> okay, now the one-to-one -one tool. So the one-to-one -one autosomal DNA comparison is going to compare one specific kit to another specific kit. That's one specific person's results to another person's specific results. So you're only comparing one-to-one. -one. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna identify segments of autosomal DNA that these two kits share in common. So once again, you're able to change the parameters. So it automatically sets it to seven centimorgans. You can actually go a little lower than that if you want to. Normally, it's not really recommended to go much lower because seven centimorgans is sort of, um, you know, the smallest chunk that you would normally look for. However, there are times when it can be useful to look at smaller amounts. Um, for example, recently I was comparing my DNA to that of a sixth cousin and um, we were known sixth cousins as in we've done the research and the research is, um, is pretty solid. So we were looking for just that tiny little segment and it works by reducing the parameter just a little bit. But if you're just looking, um, if you're just comparing yourself to somebody who you don't necessarily know how you match or something like that, it's better not to go lower than seven because uh, the smaller the amount, obviously there is more of a risk that it'll just be sort of an anomaly and uh, just by chance you might have a tiny shred of something that looks similar, but that would be an error. So does that make sense? I just, I would only use less than seven centimorgans if I had definitely done the research and knew who I was comparing there. So the one-to-one -one comparison is going to show you a chromosome browser that's going to compare the two people's kits and it's going to show you on the chromosomes which segments are matching. 
Uh, at the top of the chromosome browser, there's a key so you can see what the different um, corresponding colors mean. But really what you're looking for are big blue sections. The blue is um, telling you which sections that you have significantly in common. So if the blue is accompanied with yellow, that means that it is a half match, which is when you're matching on one side of your family. So in this example, this is my first cousin twice removed on my paternal side, um, and I'm comparing it to me. So here the yellow indicates that this cousin is just matching me on one side of my family. If you're somehow related on both sides of your family, such as, you know, full siblings or possibly if your parents are related, you would see green instead of yellow. Green's telling you it's a full match as in this person matches you on both sides of your family. If you're matching on both sides and you know, you're not siblings or anything like that and you want to check if your parents are related, the easiest way to do that is just to use the are your parents related tool. I looked at that in a recent video, so I'll link the video above up here for you to check out. Um, but yeah, it'll just tell you if, for example, if your parents are distant cousins, it's possible, you know, that you could have one of those green matches. And just quickly to touch on the one-to-one -one X DNA comparison, that is the same as the other one-to-one -one sort of autosomal tool, except it's looking at your X chromosome instead of your autosomal chromosome. So, um, basically your autosomal chromosomes and then you've got your sex chromosomes, your X and your Y. So mostly we're just looking at autosomal DNA when we're doing genealogy, but, but the X chromosome can also be useful. So if you want to do the comparison on that tool as well, there's that. So, but they're basically the same. Okay, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. And I will see you soon in my next video. Bye guys.